it. It's just a picture. Some people you once knew long ago. You can place the place, but not the time. One of them stares out at you, as if knowing you'll be looking back at them someday and knowing what it all mean long ago after the event. The other one makes a face or gesture away from the prying eyes of time and sentiment and you wonder then if even then the fate that set its course for this person. It's just a picture though before hurt and pain took a role in our lives. What are you seeing? I wonder. Maybe a family hunts up at Christmas with the dead one looking the most alive. Center of attention, gleaming, glowing with a centerpiece smile. Hiding some great pain that might be coming or is already here. Well, it's just a photo, a cheap snap of time. The brief build as they get into frame and then click, click, and away again with the day that I don't know anything else about. When I'm looking at our two friends, just young boys here. One reciprocates to the lens and makes rabbit ears behind his friend. The friend now dead mocks and makes the face. Maybe turning away from the loving father behind the lens. The have to go green and see hanging behind them is unchanged. A dad on summer's day Taking a picture of his son with his friend, with a new camera maybe, and feeling content today. Happy at his son's happiness, and his friend, clicking away with carefree days ahead. Well, it's just a picture, though, and you can't look around it or before, or even a second after it. It just hangs there provoking you thinking about the things you can't see in this picture like the slanting rock down there on the beach below you have to go there it's the only place to be the unchanging thing the unseen scene behind the picture you walk into yours while I'll walk into mine I walk into it To be a sea recluse, take time to be your friend there. Walk down the steps, on to the field of the fleeing sea breeze. To take part in something very old. The rocks held and the sea are very stern looking now, with the tide out. You walk on by. To meet the slanty rock, jutting out bravely from the cliff. Lay back on it, and lay aside my old friend. Think, then be something. Don't be afraid of the crashing waves. That's the tide, impending doom. But I cannot reach this gravestone today, not yet. So many childhood digs among this slanty rock know this that this rock is safe. How did the tide ever reach this high? You never wondered as a child. But yes, as if knowing if you know watching this waves come 
The sea has been here before. The great storm departs your mind. Still you don't leave. Not just yet. It's early still here. Let yourself listen to the whispering grind. The parting sounds. Crinkle in rocky crackles. That dying day. Saying good day today. As the moon is about to rise on the horizon. In its monthly patch. Against the setting sun. So it's warm, and you're laid back, eyes closed, into the warmth of the dying day sky, drawing colours of demise. The slanting rock resting with your back, and you hear the shoreline starts to shingle gurgle, crackling whips towards resting feet, signalling the protruding of incoming water into the seashell air. You panic a bit, open your eyes, but don't worry, you're not over yet. The light over the display, cresting above the informative rock formations of jagged brown connections running wet and dry into the more taunt sight of Winkle Island is stroking brushes of purple and pink blending the cooling blue overhanging the whiplash white clouds about to be reflected from a differential perspective. It's amazing how a scene can change so rapid and suddenly the sea is rising in. I sparked my smoke. It rises ugly taking the vertical sky masking a smoke signal like from the red skin natives in movies that one I watched make guys run barefooted after an arrow fired comes to mind I roll back watching into the stagnant air of the overbearing, heavy, drainy heat that was the summer of 2018, I close my eyes into a new meaning. Gross, my breath in stench. The smoke puffs, sucks, and weaves around my mouth, ghostly in its movements, an alleviant to define myself's existence it matches up to the atmosphere gives chrome like pollution to the sky dying in colours and here I am the only person enjoying it I open my eyes daring again time's little changing pattern on the picture had moved going slowly downward skybound seaward the slanty rock is sturdy and uncaring as you lay back upon it with smoke so you've met my friend now and he ain't brave enough you tell me I try to tell you the guy is just the rock now. That's all that's left. Finally, you get up to leave and scoot along the ledge over the incoming tide using the sharpened dent side, perched above the incoming waves, using little dents left grinded by history's tides. This rock thing could trap you here. Before receding, Back up above, the steep steps into the cliff, you see, looking back, the three nuns drowning in a harrowing swelter, bobbing troughs and peaks 
choking its onslaught, caught in the ruminating, roaring upon the sharpening knife jagged, tied grossly captured upon the peed, who carved its existence around, and all those stern pointy rocks are going gone goodbye. It's a harsh growing story, the everyday tide. Behind them was the capturing darkness again. Beyond them was Slanty Rock looking at them. Stern, strong, bicep on the cliff, untouched again for another day, and largely ignored. Over in another part, the knuckles stood still in dry, crusty kerns of shell sand, unworried. The last mark before the jagged rocks, unnerved by time's story storms. It's been a long time since the sea and peace here. The bowls filling up in bunged up crosses from waves now, while the fire and places are the same, tormenting the wall of the Grand Canyon, and Winkle Island is ceasing to be its name self again. As the sea swirls, developing around it, as it does most days, far away in other spots, on the other side, past the lone boulder, precarious, on spot, sitting breaking waves forever, looking unnatural, into the oily cement sandpit, through Crab Canyon, on past the little end cave, over wet slabs, pointious, on towards slanty rock miner, just in a slippery path, in a narrow craven climax, over a shoulder of blade rocks, to the pool over China Wall, in his reeling, but holding up against its daily flood surface. The Boulder Shoulders Bay. What follows sounds like a TV show. The grassy is safe and need not be mentioned. A great storm came here long ago. Pools and exposed rocks. Remember, we don't bother. Then the reed path comes into sight just past after the sewer tentacle. You jump into the frog swamp, marked by the mossy spots, craving into puddles. The dead crab pool r- running parallel on your right, takes you to the octopus patch, again little patches of green are recovering from some amazing storm in this rocky hunt, the octopus didn't care about that, neither did all the others, it was all swelling up in its purplish mammoth valley taking in the sea, holding the fort towards the reeds bay. Here the sea rolled, righteous around. Behind the defence, promontory rocks, calming even the most ferocious waves into little wavers that could only always lap up into the sandy bay of reeds. Then after that it's the grassy knoll and the cave, another oddity rock formation, 
Fossilly Mammae or more high rocks that stop some strong storm a memory held by puddles and bare rocks exposing the event if nature could feel trauma this is it a slither green passage follows and there a little meat and mats of rocks and sea takes the picture of a big hardy rock cliff face unshakenly worn down and tracks outwardly defensively against the sea giving protection to rough grass holding flowers around slimes of pills up into the highly plateau promontory holding forth before the fortitude held before the large whale rock barnacle that breaks waves in the reclusive spot behind the harshness is a throw away to the grassy passage then after its strength and battle the exposure and the bower begins the slime rocks are raw hair sliding up to the downwards the waves when strong crest upwards always reaching into the green passage before dissipating in envelopes and strength back down into retreat during a storm here with the waves bobbing up this place is very perfunctionary in its telling and slipped me many times towards the sea on the slidy rock that was scary before the picture becomes a deep chasm it is cement diving jump on the periphery that has been eaten up by the demise eroded by the tide and the king's chair safely sits undaunted today in its pool staring against the rather calm baroque sea with stern cliff face to protect leaps and bounds up the cliff is the only way to go from here on in up the indent of exposed rocks to the safe passage. Again, the energy of the sea meets up its matches here. Grassy passages with rocks worn down. The grand way down. I've been here in that moment, feeling its reach, the anger of the sea, watching it. It's hard to believe how it reached this spot. Where I feel safe now, with danger once all around me. When it's alive, it's alive. It's the uncaring and sentiment. See, grabbing at you, it's angry, frothy white claws. The noise alone is a beast. And the white foam river driven roars up into your space in a face off. Down rumps of grass into the bare rocks. A vertical, sharp shaped hard rock. Narrow negative, gradient ledge between the cliff and sea. Takes this picture story down along to a jump into a very dangerous cliff base that hangs downwards, a looming. Doomly doomed, witnessed by the ever looking overbearing sea, whether the right or wrong conditions. Even on a calm day, one slip on this, and you're the center, grabbing at the arguments, a going gone creature, into the swallow of sea. Over this spot, it's an always, if not this, or that not lucky the tide is in or not situation of course during a storm as well it's incredibly more dangerous the crashing waves wet the rocks the sea constantly vents a crescendo into the air when the tidally sea is resting in July outwardly exposing her always brutal domain well then it's just the burdens of rocks that smash you the danger is candy rock safe look of 
zoom in K postured indent. Clay seems flaccid and is pale. The rock so smoothly cool when it eyes out. Harsh but harmless. When in February, during a storm, it's a different story. Long ago, me and the dog, during a storm, she ran across the problem of rock brace. No butter, me crawling, knees to the ground, grabbing at squirrels, feet clipped at what the slippery rock offered. One slip and you're gone, you Every step forward, witnessing your error, disappearing into the age of abyss. The choking of raising waves, foaming claws, grabbing. There was the dog, on the other side, safe, looking at me like I'm some fool. I jumped down, relieved, to a soft spot of salty whitish grass wet underneath squashy feeling alive the salty sky smashed with the lights rain in the scattered coarsening waves belted against the rocks some memory I'm getting soaked by dribbles of a reckless fizz as I escaped This takes you to Isaac's Hole. Into the jutles that are noise of ray waves. Reaching up his cave chasm. That sound underneath waves coughing up makes you shudder. Groundless earthquake accusation. It is as you laugh off the room of a low. The big bowl of rock sits to waiting. So slotted to shaving it. It seems designed. Like the other two beforehand. It is out of shape. Looking unnatural. Too awkward to be real. Some people say Isaac put it there. It is his bower. Glass spot. Up an enclave of green. Over the trench. The deepest ditch. Into the sea here. The fall. Grabs the eyes. Into the belly. Pulling at the feel. Falling into the jagged ro black rocks. The leg muscles below the knees tremble lightly in unison to the safely soft grass patches overlooking this death. The only other thing down there is a cemented pipe. We once went schoolboys, smoke spliffs down there, and a posh guy. Overlooking, scoffed at us. Maybe he thought we were smoking crack through the pipe. Over the trench is the rich grass that grows down ditchly, growling before burrowing out in towards grayly patterns. The haunted rock cemetery, deserted crest area. Dead and dead with carbon ash, another remains still on the ground. Remote fragments flaming up, where the spirits still scream. This is and always the bonfire spot of the Bancourt Heights gang. The beating Hampton Cove, Pinewood Bat Road. The Battle of Bonfires. Whom, in the year of Mary McAleese, presidential election, used her posters to wigwam the bonfire to eclectic heat and flames higher than the pointed cap of St. George's Church. 
that may have silhouetted in the hotly bright flicker of that night. I doubt that. But it was so, so hot. You could feel the intense heat from a vast distance away. Yeah, 300 yards. This was over 20 years ago. And the bitter black scars on the rocks are still here. The harsh dry ash, painfully looking, glazed into the ground. The sense of death in this picture. Battery acid washed. Nothing grows here anymore. But bits of rugged grass. After that hassle, the picture dies out into deep panorama views. Unrewarding in details, it fondly grows in grayly coloured over a rocky bay, towered a little bit by roundy cliff running clockwise into an augmented building horizon. The chromes mismatched in the black ground. And the colours then blend together, rolling into a dull harbour wall, with a scopy lighthouse barely up, holding the foreground to something green beyond, with only one thing left to see before, the palace beside the sea, Balbriggan. There are many more place names Robo has, has given to this historic walkway. I walk through in many different directions of time and space. If you really want to live it, walk it. Even then, time within space holds most of the details. It's always ever changing. The erosion of the cliffs is ongoing. We used to go into a secluded spot under trees along the cliff, and I've sailed down the cliff through cliffy grass, mucky pursuits. And then onto the jutting rocks in the cold spot past Crab Canyon with a blue chafing rope. That's all gone now, collapsed into the sea. Only exposed rocks are left, uncaring this scene. And Roa was dead, gone into the ground with it. As the muck did, pointing down the cliff face, like a did on his coffin. The earthly ongoing demise, what an emptiness, what a triviality, what a smallness, what a no nothingness, what a pathetic franticness, what a feeble mindedness. A river, grey, running into blackened depths along the wanting banks, it's slowly rising. Filling up its path, staring the flow, a cauldron of desires created by the sea. Soon it will be all dark here, and just the moon. And what light it decides to give. I hope to hear again, you wonder. Next year is coming. Just laying back on the rock, listening to the story, the slanty rock oldest of them all. Robo, A.K. Slanty Rock, Man of the Wild, is here. Always so. He took a picture here once. I found it on the internet. Google it. Meet time gone. If you look closely, you'll see him staring at you from the sandy spot just before his slanty rock. Listen to his footsteps on the crusty shells just past the knuckles. It's just a picture though. As now and is always really was, entry is gravity. Just fleeting moments, constantly falling into time. You have to look past time to see him coming towards you. And remember, it's just a picture though. You stare, you pretend to care. 
feel something that can't come back. The other side is blank. The imagination too weak to reach there. Nothing here can harm you. Nothing is here. Just the resentment of time being captured in this way.